All right, Shalom, Makim, Shalom, Yasharala, first and foremost. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Racha Kodash, which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I also want to send out the heart of Shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so in efforts to waking up the hopefully elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And Lord willing, this is edifying. Okay. Now, the title of this lesson is going to be uh, Anticipation uh, versus Unawares. Okay. Anticipation versus Unaware. Okay. And what I want to speak on in this lesson is uh, there are going to be two mindsets upon the return of our Lord Yahweh. By Shem Yahweh Shai, okay, and uh, you know, like I mentioned, uh, some of us are going to be anticipating, okay, the return of our Lord, and some, some, and, and the majority, the majority of the people are going to be unaware, okay. Hence the the uh, the uh, saying in the scriptures, like a thief in the night, okay, and that's why I have this illustration here, okay. And, um, you know, it's only the, you know, the end of this civilization, okay, which is, entails there's going to be a day like never before, okay, like the scriptures say, Jacob trouble like never before, okay, and there'll be no day like it afterwards, okay, and the sad, the sad part about it, okay, for those who are unaware is, you're unaware until the biggest event in human history, okay? Now, for the ones of us that are anticipating, okay, that is really the bonus, okay, so to speak, for lack of better words, or the biggest, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The biggest benefit, okay? And that shows you the uh, true sentiment of prophecy, okay? Because what does the word prophecy mean to say before, okay? And the Lord saw fit to let us know what's going to happen before it happens okay now the reality of the matter is no man knows the day nor hour okay and that's plain that that's you know that's common knowledge okay i i've had people you know you know try to scoff or gainsay and say that because we profess that we are in the last days okay really in the last seconds of the last days okay and the reason we we can do that is because we're comparing the, the signs of the times, okay, according to what our Lord Yahweh Shai told us, okay, when you read Matthew, the 24th chapter, it gives clear signs. Why? Because the disciples slash apostles um, pretty much asked the Lord, and as a man, you should, you know, you should want to know what to look for in the times, okay, that the uh, the Most High is going to send his son back, <laughs> okay, because you don't want to be aware, unaware to that, man, you know? Um, it's only going to be the most terrifying times in human history, you see. But the beautiful part about our walk is that we're anticipating it, man. Okay. Now, we know we don't know the day nor hour. Okay. But we're patiently waiting. We're standing on our watch. Okay. As a matter of fact, let's bring that out uh, first. This is Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6. It says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence and give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Okay. So the benefit of us being a watchman, okay, standing upon our watch, uh, the watchtower, okay, like in the ancient times, the watchman would stand upon the walls and um, pretty much warn the people in the village or in the town or within the walls, Okay, whether it would be, uh, you know, uh, our enemies coming, you know, or, or a friend, whatever it may be. Okay, but that's the benefit of having watchmen because they would sound an alarm. Okay, but the benefit of us being watchmen, not only uh, are we set up to, to warn our people, but also we see the enemy coming. Okay, the Lord gave us the signs to look for and um, uh, what to... Um, you know, to tell our people, okay, like the scriptures say, I will stand upon my watch and, uh, 
uh, roughly paraphrasing, I believe that's Habakkuk 2, okay, where, where it speaks about, um, you know, standing upon your watch and until the Most High reproves us, and then we will say, you know, roughly paraphrasing. Matter of fact, let's get it since I butchered it so but so bad. This is Habakkuk 2 and 1. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. You see? And that's exactly what we're doing, okay? And the benefit of us, hey, because sometimes the watchmen, they're, they're, they're the first ones to get killed, Okay? But um, the benefit of us being a watchman is that we're anticipating, okay, the return of the Lord, meaning it's not going to catch us unawares, you see? And like I, I will continue to mention, it's only the end of this era, okay, or the end of this eon, okay? And we're anticipating it, which you should be doing as well. You should be anticipating the return of the Lord opposed to being unaware of it. Okay? Let's get another precept. This is um Proverbs 22. Uh We start at the top, uh, Proverbs 22 and 1. It says, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Verse 2, the rich and poor meet together. Yahweh Bashim Shai is the maker of them all. Verse 3, here's the point. It says, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Okay, and that's exactly what's going to happen, man. Okay. And hey, the Wadi Yahweh by Shem Shai for giving us that prudence. This is not something that we've done on our own. Okay, we received that call from the Heavenly Father. He knocked on our doors and we opened up. Okay, and we, we need to praise the Lord for that, man. Because you, you look around and you look at Jake and you look in their countenance, you don't see anything, man. And they don't have a clue what's about to happen. Not one clue, man. Okay, but as a man, you're supposed to have the prudence. OK, to know what's going on around you, especially if you have a, 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 a wife and children and you're the leader of your household. You're supposed to have that understanding and that prudence, man. OK. And, and more importantly, it's out there for you to obtain. I can see if there was no way for us to understand when the Lord was going to come back, you know, the, 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 you know, uh, 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 so that we can anticipate and we can prepare ourselves. You see, and that shows you that there is a true power, okay? And how do we prepare ourselves? Like the scriptures say, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. You see, so our job is to prepare ourselves and uh, uh, obtain as much wisdom and knowledge before that day arrives, okay? Because it's going to be, uh, it's not going to just, you know, poof, appear out of nowhere. There's going to be uh, gradualism with this thing. And we're, we're, we're uh, uh, within that gradualism right now as we speak. You see, with with this uh, uh, C19, you know, and them them forcing the, the the max. You see, but like I said, we're anticipating these things. We've been anticipating these things. Our elder apostles for thirty years have been anticipating these things. So who do you think is going to be more prepared, the man that's anticipating this or the man that's unaware? And that's a no brainer. You see, I read it again. <laughs> Proverbs 22 and 3, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. And how do we foresee the evil? Because this book is full of prophecies and it warns us of what to look for when those times will present themselves. You see, showing you that the most there is a power in the heavens. OK, and he loves his people. It's just that his people, the majority of his people don't love him back. And we all know what love is to keep the commandments. And one of the byproducts of keeping the commandments to the best of your ability and coming out of this world is that you're going to be made privy to what the Lord is coming with. OK, so that you can anticipate opposed to being unaware. OK, let's get. Um, uh, 
Let's get First Thessalonians chapter five, verse one. OK, it says, um, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Verse two, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And you're going to find that 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 uh, saying littered throughout the scriptures. OK, and like like I said, the average person who has no uh, 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 serious biblical knowledge has heard that slogan or heard that term. Or saying, Salakia, okay, that the Most High is going to come back like a thief in the night. But the reality is the majority of our people don't, really, to be quite uh, uh, precise, of course, they're wicked, okay, but more wicked than that, they don't even believe that there's a power because you act according to what you believe in, you see? Opposed to the true servants of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, we've... Uh, 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 you know, basically remodel our whole life, of course, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemal Shai. Why? Because we want to conform to his will so that we may be delivered and we don't get caught butt naked out here, man. Okay, and that's the reality. A lot of people are gonna get caught butt naked out here. Okay, their shame, their shame is gonna be exposed. Okay, when when your everyday anemones get taken away, you know, when the food trucks stop rolling in, the garbage pickup stop hap stops. Uh, uh, the, the garbage truck stops coming, coming in, picking up trash. OK, then you're going to see people, you know, who, who weren't anticipating this thing get caught out there, man. And, and it's going to show the countenance is going to show. You see. Uh, verse two again it says for yourselves, know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. OK, and this is uh, the Apostle Paul speaking to the brothers at the church of Thessalonica. OK. And they were studying the scriptures. And that's why he said it. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And, you know, uh, I've been made privy uh, to, you know, my wife going into labor, okay, twice. And... You could see the pain in their countenance, okay? And it wasn't an issue of, and with both of uh, my sons, uh, they came a little early, okay? Uh, maybe a week or two earlier than they were supposed to. And she had no warning that those birth pains were going to come. And they just came suddenly, you see? And that's exactly what the return of the Lord is going to entail for those who are unaware, you see? <laughs> Um, verse four, but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You see that there's nothing more beneficial than to know, uh, 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 what's about to happen. Okay. Especially the most catastrophic event in human history. <laughs> you see verse five, ye are, uh, ye are all. Oh, did I skip one? Well, verse four again. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Verse five. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Verse six. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. You see? So actually, you should be preparing. OK, and that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Well, ultimately doing these electronic epistles, you know, showing charity to the brotherhood, studying, reading. That's what we're doing. We're putting on that breastplate of faith. OK, and that helmet of salvation. Getting ready for the return of the Lord. You see? Opposed to someone who's unaware. They're not doing any of those things. And to the contrary, they're saying, hey, they've been saying the Lord was going to return for thousands of years and he's not back. Okay? Uh, 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 consequently, fitting right in, falling right into the hands of the Heavenly Father. Okay? Because, hey, the Most High is not mocked. He said a thief in the night, and that's exactly how it's going to come. 
Okay, so the people that are saying, oh, well, they've been saying that. Hey, the scriptures say our, our people have always done that. I believe that's in Ezekiel, um, where it speaks about this proverb that is amongst Israel, that the days are far off. You see? So that spirit has always been amongst our people. It says, um, verse 9, for the Most High have not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Okay? And that's a, hey, that is our expected end, man. Okay? That's our hope. The word hope means expectation. And that's what our expectation is, that if we continue to do the things that we're required to do in this ministry, okay, the Lord is going to deliver us, man. Okay? But that proves our anticipation versus unaware. There's a huge difference. This is the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3. And... Let's start at three, second Peter's three and three. It says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. OK, and this is, you know, a response that you get from somebody that really doesn't believe in the heavenly father. OK. And like I say, that vibration has always been amongst Israel. OK, but hey. Just like in every time praying, every any, every generation, okay? The Most High has brought high holy hell down upon his people, okay? But this one is going to be unamassed, man, okay? The scriptures, like I said earlier, consider it Jacob's trouble like never before, okay? And you go through the history, uh, transatlantic slave trade, the conquistadors, 70 AD, the Babylonian, uh, 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 the Babylonian Empire, Okay, the Assyrians, you know, so on and so forth, man. We've gotten crushed as a nation for our disobedience. Okay, but the majority of our people are not going to repent. So the Lord said, once and for all, I'm going to crush Israel. Okay, and they're going to get it right. Okay, it says, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Verse five. For this, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of the most high, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. OK, so the main point, the, the, the Lord saying they're willingly ignorant. OK, because every Israelite has a zeal. OK, but it's not according to knowledge. And the brother Ramak was saying they camp, man, like, you know, that they have a zeal, but it, you can barely, you know. You can barely attest to it now, especially at this point, okay? Because we're living in the worst times ever. That means our people are the worst they've ever been, okay? So it's hard in most cases to even attest that they have a zeal, okay? But, hey, the scriptures say they do, so they do. It says, for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of the Most High, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. OK, and that's always been the narrative. OK, going all the way back to the flood. Why, why do you think the reason the flood came? OK, because they were ungodly men on the earth. The Most High made a covenant with Noah that he would never flood the earth again. OK, but he never said he won't burn this bitch from sea to shining sea. OK, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Like we're reading. Uh, verse eight, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the most with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. OK, so it's giving you the, the time frame that the heavenly father is moving on. OK, it, of course, it's his time. He created it, you know, but showing us, look, hey, hey, one day with the heavenly father is a, th a, a thousand years and vice versa. Verse nine, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, 
not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that all is speaking of who? The elect. OK, so the reason one of the main reasons this thing is tearing and has tarried the way it has. OK, first and foremost, because the most High wants it to. OK, but secondly, it's so that the elect can be sealed, man. And the elect can come to the understanding and the truth. And that way they can anticipate the return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah. OK, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heaven shall pass away. With a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Verse 12, here's the point. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. You see? So that's giving you the mindset that a man of God should be in, hasting unto the coming of the day of, of the Most High. Okay, why? Because <clears throat> without that happening, we don't get delivered out of our captivity. Okay? For us to uh, 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 go into the kingdom of heaven and be joint heirs with our Lord, Yahweh Shai, these things have to happen. Okay? And if you know that and you're anticipating it, what are you going to do? You're going to hasten it. You're going to beg the Lord for that day to come. You see? And that shows the difference between anticipation and being unaware. Okay? Now, let's get one more. We'll close this thing out. This is the book of Matthews, chapter 24. And this whole chapter pretty much, you know, embodies uh, the, 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 the monotone of this lesson okay but for time's sake we'll get straight to the point this is the book of matthew chapter 24 and let's start at 30 34 this is matthew uh 24 and 34 verily i say unto you this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled okay and this is the scripture i quoted or uh, the chapter i quoted earlier matthew 24 where the lord gave those signs Okay, to the disciples, and he's basically saying, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Verse 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And as you can see, this is in red letters. It says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. You see? So our Lord Yahushua doesn't even know the day, but he knows the uh, 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 the signs to look for, okay? Just as we do. Okay, because our lives are what? Our lives are lost in Yahweh Shah. You see? Okay, so when he returns, we're going to gain it with him. Lord willing, with those men. Verse 37 But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. You see? So this is a common characteristic of the Heavenly Father. When he brings out judgment, hey, they're going to be a, a, a small eclectic group of people that are privy to it. And then the masses are going to be blind. OK, but one of the, the main things is none of them are going to be able to say that they haven't heard. OK, because the scriptures say the word has gone out to the ends of the earth. Surely they have heard. OK, but like we read in Second Peter, they're willfully ignorant of it. It says, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. You see, and this is plain, man. You really don't need an understanding or a deep breakdown on this, man. This is straightforward. You see, verse 40, then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the one left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Okay. And the word watch is synonymous with anticipating. Okay. Opposed to being unaware. OK, and that's the beauty of prophecy. And we need to thank the Lord more that he's given us that spirit. OK, which is the testimony of Yahweh Shah, the spirit of prophecy. And that's why we can anticipate 
and we sit here on our posts and do the things that we need to do, okay, to be ready for the return of our Lord and Savior. Okay, so I believe I hit the point, and Lord willing, this was edifying. With that, I say shalom.